that's basically pinnacle to all of this. Is that the reason it becomes tough is that if you understand this, then you're in a concert where you're friends with like a lot of people that believe in prediction but don't really believe in prophecy but might have interest in the older prophecies. You're also friends with a lot of people that believe in prophecy but like don't exactly understand scientific pr prediction and somewhat believe it but uh, don't want to believe it if they think it's at odds with prophecy although like their faith in prophecy is such that um, they have like preferential prophets of like who's the best and the nature of their faith is that they have to have secondhand witnesses so like they don't get as dramatic manifestations so these two people tend not to be friends because the one group always like investigates and thinks that they're kind of on peers but a little bit more doubtful and then the other one investigates and gets like intimate notions from prayer but they don't get the same dramatic manifestations as the other people so there's like huge groups of like differences in culture kind of and it's like well now you know why it's like a big deal that there'd be like false prophecies it's like it, when you believe the prophecies are going to come in, but someone wants to put a date on it, it's like, well, it says that they don't know, like, the day or, like, the month, but it doesn't mean that you couldn't know the year. It's like, you almost look at it and be like, why would somebody actually quote the year like that and come out with something? It's like, you could be in, like, bad news. Like, if you quoted the thing as if it was authoritative and you're trying to promote faith... Don't you have, like, a notion of the afterlife? So wouldn't you be motivated by, like... But if you purposely, like, led somebody astray, like, God's really not going to, like, be too happy with you or whatever? It's like, well, they could be deluded. It's like, they could be deluded. But it's like, those are the types of bets you don't exactly want to make, kind of. It's like, if the mode of the prophecy in the past was like, well, no, just, like, shape up. Like, repent or, like, uh, reform or whatever. It's like... Like, do, do turn back to God, but, like, also, like, you need to change these specific things or things will continually get worse. It's like, everybody can understand that. But when you start putting in, like, deadlines or whatever, which could potentially be arbitrary, it's like, well, we're going to set a line in the sand based on, like, our study and say that there was, like, a secret message in Scripture that might not have been. It's like, it becomes really tough. Because what happens is, like, if there's more than one of those, the margins of them become tight. It's like... If you have a guess, if you are necessitated to make a range and you're not exactly like, like a grand poobah like prophet or anything, like you're not getting like visual manifestation on a regular basis. You're not getting like auditory leads, but you think you have like a decent psychic thing going on. Like you're at every turn telling people like, don't exactly listen to like what I'm saying. It's like kind of do, but like take it with salt. It's like you become credible because you're like, well... It's like closer to like a mode of prediction. Like you're in between because it's like you understand like why the temper of these people is such and like why the temper of these people is such and how they can potentially get tricked. So I always look and be like, well, um, there would be, everyone wants to focus on like overt false prophets and charlatans, but what they don't get is there could be well-meaning people that could just do damage. Because what happens if they build up a case based on something, it's like not everything that like got excluded from the Bible should be canon. You shouldn't use the fact that just because there was like the Nicene Creed and there were vested interests or whatever, you don't want to blow that out of proportion to say that anything that anybody said was canon and therefore you can like cherry pick things that you like to come to a conclusion that's like, well, the world, it's going to happen. Like he's going to come and like, because that's what, what they've done kind of. So it's like, well, it's going to be like 2028. It's like that rubs really close to home kind of. It's like, well... But then if there's another one that's saying it's like, well, but it's correlated with the Jubilee, so it's more likely that, like, Christ would come before the next Jubilee, which would be, like, 68 or something. You're looking at it, it's like, well, that one's, like, more tolerable, and you want to listen to it a little bit more because it's like, well, it still seems urgent. And so, it co like, it coincides with our, our fades and things and, like, the apparent signs that, like, things are kind of getting crummy and that we should shape up. But it's like, you can understand a range it's like people want to put up to numbers when they're in the prediction camp, but then when they see one number, they get really scared and they're like, but if it is false, like we don't want to put all our weight in that. It's like, what if they got like turned and then 2028 happened, didn't happen. It's like they could lose their faith in God or all these other things because they listened to like one guy that said it was going to happen. It's like, so the actual instances where we want like a discrete number, it's like there has to be a context in human cognition where there's a notion of like one timeline and there like have to be like, 
we, we have to like grow up kind of and say that it's like, well, if the dataization or whatever of things and like grams, like up, up upon millions, upon billions, upon trillions, upon quadrillions, whatever, and big data or in persons, like whatever is so recent that we should like get like a lot of hindsight and realize it's like, well, we're not very good at even managing grands then is the thing. That's why it's scary because it's like, we can't view ourselves as like a 5,700 guy or like a 5,600 guy or a 5,500 guy or 54, 53, 52, 51, or like 5,000 guy is those all being individual guys. But we can stereotype and say that there's like a 2,000 guy and like a 1,900 guy and an 1,800 guy and a 1,700 guy. So it's like, we've got like four guys. We've got five guys. It's like, we got five guys, burgers and fries. It's like, there's a 20, there's a 2,100 guy. It's like, well, he's in the future or whatever. And then there's like the 2,000 guy. It's like, wow. It's like, Maybe like Agent Smith and like the Matrix and like the corporate thing and like the capitalism, socialism. Now that typified it and like Cold War was like, okay, you throw that in there. And it's like, but then there's like the, well, that's like the 20 hundred. It's like, you get it messed up, right? Because it's like the centuries and the others. But like, well, however you do it, there could be a 2100 or 2100, 1900, 1800, 1700. But it's like, so you're saying you've got about five guys, but in any thousand years, there's at least 10 but there hasn't been like one calendar and like it hasn't been common for like the Jewish people to like come out. And if they ever had the notion to like say that it's like, well, this was definitely like, in other words, like you have to wonder and be like, is anybody adept enough that they could make the stereotypes? Is it possible that the, the types of cognition where you could get hunches based on whether the thing was like a futurist hundred guy or like a past or a present hundred guy, is there a cap on the individual practically where like most people, the baseline people couldn't go back so that it wouldn't be sufficient to like school it with a new calendar or whatever. It's like you understand why you'd get things wrong. You understand why there'd be like a very slim like portion in time where it would actually ever be relevant that you could get leads on things and like have faith to, to like finish deals or do anything because it's like, well, that is like 22, 12 or whatever. That's like coming in like a little bit. Yeah, I guess I'll like do It's like, that's the way people think a lot of the times. It's like they have like private context of like when they think the world is going to end based on like, well, I got like my scientific thing over here, which like says that like the, the sun is going to be like the cause of it. It's like, People have to like leverage like, well, I can manage millions in this sphere this way and this one this way. But it's like there's not like a proper notion of like managing like thousands as such or millions as such. And as much as people want to like create notions of like time going backwards, like so much further or whatever. And it's like practically there are so few people that manage a million external units. And then if the thing doesn't need to be money. It's like there are so few proofs and fidelity where people could delineate like when it would be appropriate to bring in like a proper million figure when million is like never dropped in scriptures and you can only conceive of time really in thousands like we talked about. It's like you have guys that you can stereotype in hundreds within millenniums but you can't keep records straight on one timeline and you want to persist and say that there's like an ADBC when you could make the thing one timeline from like Jewish Adam. And then like, like if you want, right. And then if you wanted to say, but there's biological Adam that like preceded that. Cause there's like a whole group of people. It's like, if you wanted that on the books, like put the negative numbers back there kind of, or whatever. Or it's like, if, if you find like, you think you find new evidence or whatever, then it's like, well, instead of like 6,000, we'll end up having like 12,000 years or something. But it's like, no one really has the integrity to like actually work backwards and be like, well, no, like, I should usually only bring up figures that represent my competency in history practically, which means that um, recent history is always of most effect. So, like, lower totals always represent higher fidelity within individuals and higher totals. Persons that would view things within, like, 6,000 years of time would still have better conclusions about solutions to problems than people that would have 10,000 or 15,000 because the further you go back, the more you have to fill in falsehood. You have to fill in data and interpret it linguistically when there was no linguistic record 
Whereas like there's tons of oral record as well as written record that goes back at least six grand. So what you have to say is that like human cognition like generally shouldn't manage sums above the total of history. Although like there have been like material blessings which is, have made it convenient to come up with the classes of millions and billions or whatever, but that like it could be a moderating influence, influence towards humility to like consistently look at this and say, well, in, in this, I mean, in the grand scheme of the last six thousand years, as opposed to like, well, in the grand scheme of the last like sixty-five million years, it's like you want to quote all the dinosaurs and all this stuff that happened before humanity. When the only people you're talking to are the people that you've been talking to for 6,000 years. You haven't been talking to anybody 7,000 years ago. Well, right. It's like, well, why are you quoting it? It's like, well, I can't help it. I'm a Hollywood producer and, like, we've made the money. It's like, it seems more permissible when the person has managed the thing, even if money is due to corrupt, that they could transact notions in years which are void any linguistic data or any oral record. But it's like, um, upon, like, well, another look at this, it's like, it's not exactly high fidelity. So what I'm saying kind of is like, as these things happen, there's going to be bound to be, because there already have been, somebody that calls the thing and gets it wrong. And when they get it wrong, kind of, they're going to be people that like lose faith, and then people that want to capitalize on it and say that the religion is false because that guy called it wrong. So there has to be like a better class to say it's like, What's, like, the pinnacle thing that they're saying is going to happen before the guy? Like, the penultimate thing, maybe? Or, like, not the ultimate, like, the one right before the ultimate thing, I guess. So that it's, like, if we can all get around that there could potentially be, like, an antichrist or a tyrant, it's, like, well, we'd all have, like, an interest in, like, pushing that guy out as further into the future. It's, like, once you say that, it's, like, then everybody can get it. They're, like, well, wait a minute. So even if I have, like, some doubt in the Christian thing, it plays into it. It's like, well, yeah, like it would play into it for your end because instead of saying it's like, well, it loses fidelity because it gets f pushed further and further out. What you should say is, well, no, but like if it's on the books like that and people are already using fear and like you can look around and there's all these opportunistic people, then you would always be against an antichrist because you'd always be against a Hitler. You'd always be against a Stalin. You'd always be against a Pol Pot. You know what I'm saying? You'd always be against an Attila the Hun. You'd always be against a Nimrod, kind of. It's like when you could look at it that way, it's like, well, and then when you say, well, yeah, we'll, we'll presume he exists and that we want him to be as far out as possible. It's like, okay, well, then if you can actually buy the time, then if you have to quote when you think he's going to come down, you can quote a range and there can be like competing layman ranges on the things that don't cause mania because nobody is calling the thing with such specificity that they're saying they're it. It's like if you want to have like some word on it, but you don't want to actually come out and say that you got it prophetic, but you want it to be like somewhat authoritative, then you want to say that it's like, well, then it would have to have like liberty kind of. And that like you would bias it based on self-interest and be like, well, I have a hope basically that the guy doesn't come until like, like 68 or 78. So that if it became fashionable that around that time, people were expecting him, then like all through the twenties and thirties and forties and fifties and sixties, we could forestall it. And then if he didn't come around then when we've been basically been advert doing free advertising from him, we could view it as a victory kind of. Right? And then we could set, like, another date. It's like, if you use the fact that, like, eventually a tyrant is going to come because, like, every nation falls, then what you'd say is that, like, well, we could exploit that by, like, having faith that it could happen by saying, well, if these are the things that are going to typify the tyrant, let's schedule these reforms in this decade, these and that, these and that, these and that. In other words, you would try to make it impossible for him to come or impossible for him to have as wide of a range by making some countries like so reformed or whatever that it's like well you're never going to get us like we're going to be the rebellion force or something that's what you'd want to do it's like anybody could get behind that because it's like there's not like the hopelessness of like a date that's looming and like not being able to do anything and then there's not the oppression of thinking that it's like cheap because the deadline's going out further and further it's like framed in a way where it's like well, no, potentially the deadline, it couldn't go out further and further indefinitely, but from our, like, mortal perspective, it could seem that way so long as 
it was coupled with desires within every decade to reform matters so that whenever it happened in like our generation or for our children, we'd be more prepared and there'd be like less collateral damage, basically however it did transpire.